hey, you've done so much with your resume now. Let's make sure you get a good grade. You don't want to make any dumb mistakes or leave some things off. Or maybe you don't want to maybe uh, forget about doing some extra credit, some stuff that's going to give you a little boost also. Remember, the, the grade of how this resume turns out is really important. So you want to give everything you can here. Get it all right. Um, one thing you can do is you can, of course, talk to me about it, or do a conference, you can show me things, uh, ask questions, and so on. But let me give you some overall tips and ideas. And this is a, I'm, I'll pretty much go over this handout, which is here available for you to look at too. Yes, you have to make sure you get the minimum requirements. A minimum of four HTML pages unified by design, including typography, color, and structure. So it must feel like a single website with a minimum of four pages. And it's almost certainly going to have more than that. Those include an index.html, which was your cover letter and maybe somewhat changed now, or some kind of a welcome page. And it, like all the other pages, must have a, at least one image. It will probably be an image of, of you. Um, it must have two, at least two, resume-like pages. Content divided among them. You may have more. You're strongly encouraged to have photos for each of these pages, at least a photo on each of these pages, if not more. And then at least one page that is, we call it, I call it samples. But it's just a place to show things that you've done, things that you've made, things that you've been involved with that produce something, perhaps. That stuff is going to be different for every one of you, and you should have by now done a lot of brainstorming and gotten stuff together. Hopefully, it's stuff is um, uh, presented visually, too, not just links. It could be audio, video, text, links to publications, links to PDFs or Word documents or some other types of documents. I've had people do links to other program, programming and stuff. And uh, Think about making things into image, though. You may have more than one page for samples. Um, try again, try to present these visually. Consider some kind of a gallery. We've done a gallery already as an assignment. Maybe you want to do a gallery here. That's not required, but there must be something with a significant amount of stuff to show us. Um, it doesn't have to be schoolwork. It could be work in an internship. It could be something you've done that's not even school at all. Maybe it's just a lot of photographs from a, 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 a big trip or event or something. All pages must include internal navigation. Uh, all must have at least one piece of art. In addition, if you if you have a repeated mugshot or banner, um, mugshots, I don't know if it's such a good idea to repeat the same mugshot on every page. Some people do it. Sometimes they make it as part of their banner. Okay, if you want to, but that doesn't count as the art on every page, right? Same, same thing, if you make a banner, that's fine to sort of replace your H1. However, that doesn't count as the art on every page. There must be an actual real photograph. On every page and it has to be different it uh, could be that mugshot is used on your on your index though sure must include contact information and copyright information on every page um, all pages must have appropriate absolute links to external websites so it has to be links and of course all this stuff has to be styled properly as part of this color scheme and so on too so that's the minimum you have to do now, what things but you get wrong? Well, of course, there's lots of possibilities. Um, if you don't have subfolders for your images and stuff, or maybe the images, the links are bad. That would be very bad. So make sure it all works properly. Make sure you really do write out your relative links properly. Um, beyond that, those kind of basic things, and like, it's like bad spelling or something like that, beyond those kind of basic things, um, one of the problems people sometimes have is they do not have not sized images correctly. They've simply resized them in HTML or in CSS. But really, the image is some giant original image, which is the one that you're actually using. Uh, you might use sizing things in HTML in particular. It's quick and easy to get it to decide what size you want the image. But then you need to go back and actually make the image that size in Photoshop or something like it. All images need alt text. I'll be looking. So all text is required. Write good H1s and titles. All right. Um, the titles, remember, they're not they're not restricted in length. So I want to make sure, including your after, in addition to your name, after some kind of a separator, usually a pipe character, that every topic on the page is written out. So that's good for SEO. But H1s need to be shorter. Um, so it's only like the main overall topic plus your name for the H1. Um, 
So links, where appropriate, make sure you're linking in paragraphs or lists or DDs, not in headings though. Whatever you do, you're not linking in headings. I actually think that the best links work in paragraphs and DDs. Uh, LIs, if, especially the longer ones perhaps, um, but but you should really feel like a link is just flows as part of the, the, the narrative of the text. It shouldn't feel like it's you've stopped to make a link. The link should be part of the text. That sometimes requires some rewriting. Um, but if you start, if you if you don't do links, or if you do your links and headings, that would be deduction. Uh, bad color scheme or color color scheme problems. Uh, many people in their color two and three had the issue of backgrounds that were too dark. Yeah, you were playing with lots of color, and that's okay. Um, but now this is for real. So you're probably going to back off on the color and make sure that everything is really crisp and legible and you only use bits of color that make sense. Okay, that's a way to avoid some common errors. Now let's talk about the ways to get extra points and maybe boost your grade. Use extra images, but they can't be all the same size. I still want to have a feeling that one is a dominant image. One is a big image and everything. The next biggest is at least half the size or no more than half the size of the big image maybe there's three images maybe you got a big image and then two smaller ones that's great that's fine now maybe the image you have which you want to use as the big image actually is about a topic which is further down the page well then reorganize the page you'd rather not have the really big image at the very bottom of the page if it's a good a good photo to look at um, remember images like should many images should be and will be floated in your text but if it's a really big image, it doesn't have to be. It can be played central, uh, centered above uh, a heading, for instance. Use captions for images that need them. Captions, uh, well, well used captions, well done captions would be uh, some extra credit. Using social media icons. You should have some social media links, but what if you use icons for those? Maybe also icons for um, phone number and stuff. I actually think the best thing to do is use text for phone and email but then use icons for Facebook and Twitter and so on and so forth. Of course, they should be linked. Doing a gallery for the samples is some extra credit. Yes, I would hope I see a lot of you do that. Do that. But now, why don't you go a step further? What if each of those gallery items is clickable? And or maybe even some something part of, part of the, uh, or all of the, uh, the cut line, perhaps. And then when you click on it, you go to a sub page. A sub page of the gallery which now shows that image or whatever it is full size and perhaps there's more explanation too um, remember a gallery let's say you may have multiple galleries you may have a gallery of images a gallery of word documents a gallery of whatever and maybe you'll split them up and make different ones maybe they each have a heading maybe they're all, all on the same page though anyway they may need some explanation make sure there's explanation there if they need them but maybe doing a, a doing a gallery yes and doing sub pages for a gallery that's a lot of work creates a lot of pages but once you make one the way you want it you can pretty much just copy it over and over again right and just sub out the the the, the information and the images image name um hey i forgot to mention one of the ways to to have a common error is especially in images starting to forget the idea of our file naming our file naming still applies here so no capital letters or special characters or stuff okay what else hey how about for extra credit this is rarely done, but it's actually not that hard. Scan, or why don't I just say instead, photograph um, your signature, like a nice signature that you do on a piece of paper, and then work on it in Photoshop, take out the background um, <clears throat> with the magic wand or something, and then um, just uh, make it into like a, perhaps a, a PNG, and then use that as a little image at the bottom of your cover letter. Like it's like it, as if it's signed. This is an option. Um, using a web font, um, especially if you want something special and different. Remember, even if you use a web font, there should still be a stack following that web font choice. So you need to get the script from Google, put it up in the head, and then make that the first font in your stack. That might be for the whole page, or more likely it's for a heading of some kind. Um, using a banner that really matches your color scheme and style. Now you don't have to do a banner, and I don't want you to do any of these things if it makes your what you make worse. It'd be better to have a really nice, simple, well-constructed website than to try to throw in all this extra credit stuff and make it kind of glitchy or dumb. 
But if you choose to have some kind of a special text for your H1, that's, for instance, a cursive text or some decorative or novelty text. And if you don't want to go the route of a web font, then you can make a banner, make it into art. Um, remember, if you do this, avoid the deduction you would get if you then just delete the H1. You have to tell the H1 to dis display none, and then you put the banner up there. Making your page more flexible or fluid, maybe with some of the techniques you'll learn as part of the Dream Dreamweaver exercise. Using a table, you know, that's rarely done. I don't think our information applies to it generally, but if it does, well, that would be fine. Embedding audio and video, particularly on the samples page, maybe some stuff you did in a class um, or for a, in a practicum or in an internship. Now, the way you want to embed it, ideally, is you want it to be on YouTube or Vimeo or something like that, and then take the embed code. But I will have gone over that by, by now. So those are some ideas. If you have other ideas, something else you want to do, hey, why don't you let me know? I'm sure it'll be fine, but I sh we should probably talk about it, something else, especially significantly different. Um, but I'm happy to look at it. Um, and if you want some more ideas, just take a look through all those sample resumes that I have on the Moodle site and look through and think about the things that they did, too. Okay, good luck with your resume.